In this box are the guts of the Meshnology N37 Mesh-tastic device thingy. If you watch a lot of my videos, like I know most of you do, you may recall that my very first Mesh-tastic device was a pre-made turnkey ready-to-use right out of the box type device. No assembly or radio dorkestry required, I just had to take it out of the box and turn it on. However, it was pricey, and at the time, I was willing to pay that high price because I didn't want to do all of that fiddling and radio dorkestry stuff to build one myself, something I have complained about in several videos many times. So after seeing me whine and complain about how complicated it looked to put together a Meshtastic device, the Meshnology Corporation sent me this the low-cost N37 Mesh-tastic thingy to prove to me that piecing together one of these things was not only way cheaper, but it is also not all that difficult. And they assured me that even someone as unskilled and stupid as me could do it. Probably. So after looking at their online instruction sheet, which says it takes only seven simple steps to piece this thing together, and after more reassurances from them that I'm probably not as stupid as I look, I agreed to try it. So in this video, I'm going to see how easy or not easy and how long it takes to build one of these things from the time I take it out of the box to getting it on the air. This will not be a review of the Meshnology N37. Consider this more of an IQ test. The price for the Meshnology N37 is $42 of monies, and I will put an affiliate link so that you can purchase one for yourself in the more information section of this video below. And if you use discount code MESH10, you will get an additional 10% off of your purchase. But hurry, because I stole that discount code off the Ham Radio 2.0 YouTube channel, and I have no idea how much longer it's gonna last. And yes, the Meshnology Corporation of Okinawa did send me this at no cost, so they could share it with you my favorite viewer. So I gathered together all of my tools and very carefully laid out everything on my sterile work environment, and then very carefully inventoried everything to see what I was dealing with. It came with the 3D printed case, the 3000 miller amp hour battery, a GPS, a big antenna, and a connector for the antenna. And in this hermetically sealed, childproof, indestructible bag was the main motherboard, or whatever you call it. And in this little dime baggie was a bunch of screws and nuts and bolts and buttons and a double-sided sticky pad thing. And to see exactly how long it was going to take for a mentally disadvantaged old man to put this all together, I started my stopwatch. And then I started staring blankly at the pictures telling me what to do next. Step one says, place three buttons. Simple enough, I think I can handle that. But I then quickly realized that these buttons are tiny. But luckily, I have a lot of experience placing tiny things in holes. Step two says, place development board. And so far, this is actually pretty easy. Although I did have to figure out how to place the development board, like as in what orientation, so that took me a minute. Step three says, install the nuts and screws. Again, pretty easy, nothing over my head so far, but it didn't say which screws to use in which holes, so I just took a guess, and they all went in pretty easily. I imagine that if I had guessed wrong, it would not have been quite so easy. At this point, I was feeling pretty confident in my technical abilities, and I was now ready for step four, which says, connect the antenna, battery, and GPS. Which sounds to me like three steps, but I'm not an electrical engineer, so I could be wrong. It was at this point that I ran into a bit of trouble, because I was not sure what order the shiny little round thingies were supposed to go on. And no matter what order I put them in, it seemed like if I used them all, the antenna was not able to screw on all the way to make a good connection. 
so I ended up not using them all. If you know how they are supposed to go on, please leave a comment and enlighten us all. But after some struggling, I was able to get past this step, and I was now ready for step five, which says, attach the antenna and GPS. Again, this sounds like two steps to me, but I didn't go to college, so I'm probably wrong. And this is when things started to get a bit more difficult, mostly because of my fat, shaky fingers and because the pictures are not super clear on what connects to where and the connectors are tiny, itty-bitty, micro-tiny little. Step six was to install the battery, and by that I think it meant to plug it in and use the sticky tape to keep it in place. But again, I'm no electrical engineer, so I'm just guessing. And after carefully checking that I guessed correctly before permanently taping it down, I was able to successfully install the battery. And then all I had to do was figure out how the GPS antenna goes in, which took another minute or so, but was not that difficult. And the next step was to install the nuts and screws, which again was a bit of a challenge because they are tiny and because I kept dropping them. And being the expert electrical engineer that apparently I am now, I made sure that none of the wires were pinching anywhere, and then I started jamming in the nuts and screws. And it took another minute for me to figure out that the nuts drop into these little slots and you have to hope that they don't fall out whilst you try to jam the screws in, or the nuts or whatever they're called, while you try to jam them into the holes and tighten them up. I tightened everything down and it was at this point that I realized that I had a couple of leftover parts that hopefully aren't very important. But after only 18 minutes, I had put it all together. And now it was time for the moment of truth to see if it works or not. So I wiped off all of the burrito grease and turned it on. And indeed, it did work the very first try. It seems that I am not a complete and total loser because I was able to figure it out all by myself. So I was able to put it together all by myself just by following the pictures on the instruction sheet. And it took me less than 20 minutes, and yes, it does work. Although I did have a couple of leftover bits, and I realized that I did not take the screen protector off of the screen, one of my favorite things to do, because it didn't say to do that in the instructions. It comes with the firmware pre-flashed, so there's no need to figure out what software or firmware or whatever to download and flash to it because that's already done. Basically, once you piece it all together, which as you just saw with your very own ocular sauce packs was actually pretty easy. Once you do that, you just install the Meshtastic app on your phone, pair it up via Bluetooth, and you are ready to start chatting with anonymous men over the Mesh network. Anyway, if you have been thinking about buying your very first low-cost Meshtastic device, but were intimidated by all of the radio dorkestry of putting one together yourself, fear not, because if an idiot like me could figure it out, so can you. Probably.